Hi, it's, it's Maria, and it's about one o'clock in the morning, and I'm really tired, but I just had to uh, get this message out to you, and it's called, The Honda Was Spinning Out of Control. So, like a spinning top, remember those tops that we used to push the, push the, the metal thing in, and they would go round and round, and um, either someone would stop it, or it topples over and crashes. And so human beings are like that too. So we're here to live joyously on Mother Earth, right? Yet we have so much to learn um, about how to navigate our way through. Because life is not passive, but rather life summons us to be our best. And that calls us to be an active participant, right? To do something. And um, because to do nothing allows situations in our world to only get worse. And we know what that's like. Overcoming challenges is just part of our story and our evolution on this little planet of ours. Um, and I wanna give you an example. I leased, I think I, I might've told you this before, but I leased a 2020 Honda Odyssey last September. A beautiful car, I was excited. You know, from day one there were, but from day one <laughs> there were really weird things happening. I mean, like really weird. In fact, um, some people, uh, kidded me that like the car was possessed and we'd all laugh but I mean it really wasn't very funny because I'd be driving along and the wipers would turn on like in the front and then the wipers would turn on in the back and the alarm would go off uh, at random times like sometimes even in the middle of the night um, the tail lights would fail so people in other cars would be like waving me down saying lady <laughs> You're driving a black car at night with no lights on. What is the matter with you? And I'd go, oh my gosh. Um, it would need more oil after like 1,500 miles. And I mean, that's just like crazy. I can't afford to be buying oil for a car, um, you know, every so often. And I was buying gas like crazy too because the gauges would show that um, it was empty when I had just filled it up with gas or it would show that it was full when it was like empty. I knew I hadn't bought gas for a while and I thought, oh great, I'm gonna get stuck someplace in the middle of the night. And so sometimes when um, there'd be fluids like gushing out of different parts of the, um, under the car. <laughs> And I was like, oh my gosh. So I'd park and I'd like be ready to walk into a store, but I'd hear it would be like a fire hydrant, you know, was just kind of spewing. So I'd turn around and I'd see it was my car. And there were just like, I mean, really from like, I don't know, 10 feet, it would just like be spewing. I even took pictures of it. There are big puddles all over. And I didn't know what kind of fluids those were anyway. And so they were spewing out. Um, and the doors would lock and I actually got locked in and uh, fortunately I had my phone and I had to call uh, the roadside assistance and they came and somehow they got the doors locked but they also um, locked me out of the car too and just crazy stupid stuff I mean just really insane and so I kept complaining to the LA dealership do I even say their name? Airport Marina Honda. Anyway, they ignored me. Um, and I wanted a different name. I mean, I wanted a different car and they ignored me even more with that. And things just didn't add up, you know? Um, but I didn't know what else to do. So I just kept like writing emails and calling them and no one cared at all. <laughs> so I took it to different dealerships. I took it to like, I think six different dealerships because at one time, you know, like if the lights would fail and then I'd, I'd look and I'd say, okay, so where's the nearest Honda dealership? So I'd take it there. And so anyway, I took it to like six of them and um, they said, come on, Maria, you know, this stuff just can't happen unless there's outside interference. And so I was like, outside interference. Um, and so they said, well, obviously, you know, other people were given the fobs, you know, the, I don't have one right here. Yeah, I do. You know, these are like fobs, right? And it turns, um, it controls the car. And then they have other um, fobs that are more intricate and they can control other aspects of the car, like the windshield wipers and stuff like that. Uh, and they said, you know what, uh, you know, you're being had. And I thought, wait a minute, this is crazy. 
Um, but the key here is that the longer um, I waited, the worse it got. Things just kept escalating. And so now we're back to the messages of some, um, some of my past videos um, that talked about until we confront what is right in front of our little nose, things get worse, right? And there are lessons to be learned about self-care and self-love. So there are boundaries that we simply cannot allow others to cross. And God knows we've all allowed people to cross our boundaries, right? When we knew we should have said no, but we said yes. <laughs> Ooh. Anyway, I know on some level I had to stop acting like I didn't know what was going on. Of course I knew, but it was too crazy. And who was I going to talk to anyway about it, you know? Um, I didn't want to confront my family. <laughs> After all, they weren't talking to me anyway. <laughs> they, you know, my family, the ones that had stolen my home and all my money and put me out on the street and left me for dead. Yeah, that family. Anyway, um, why would I want to have anything to do with that group anymore anyway, right? Um, but I, I did because they were my family and I love them. And anyway, that's the boundaries we were talking about. Well, anyway, God had other plans. Yeah. So it's no accident that they were pushing my buttons and I had to take a stand. Uh huh. Because eventually I would have no option but to put my foot down. Yes. And that's exactly what happened. Um, I was hardly driving the Odyssey. Uh, but now it was overheating <laughs> it was why am i laughing but because it was dangerous but it was overheating it was smoking and it was making these loud rumbling noises and so i thought oh my gosh this car is definitely not safe and i was not going to get behind that wheel and you know it was very weird because one day i was at the beach and i um uh in california and there was this noise, I was parked, and there was this noise by the street, and it was like, like this, and I, so I looked up, and it was a car that was going like this, kind of slowly, and then all of a sudden, it burst into flames, and I was like, oh my gosh, and like the whole thing was just total, uh, it had totally incinerated, and by the time the fire trucks and the police got there, I thought, oh, you know, I don't even know what they could identify about the car. And I hadn't seen, I didn't even know what color the car was because it was nighttime. But anyway, I was not going to get behind that wheel with a car that was overheating and smoking and making rumbling uh, sounds anyway. So, you know, in a perfect universe, although I wanted peace, I couldn't escape my family you know, that had chosen to clean me out. I just couldn't escape it. And why was I surprised that my safety was now being sabotaged? So really, you know, this isn't brain surgery, right? And so um, there's always a balance of energy. And when we allow others to disrespect us, and believe me, they do it gladly, until we take a stand and say no more. Um, it's kind of the bully mentality, right? You know, you have to face your fear and then the fear disappears. Well, um, and also, you know what? We have to face everything with love, no matter what. Uh, but we do have to stand up for ourselves. And this is a universal concept. You know, it's a lesson that souls choose to learn during our lifetimes. You know, we're here to live a joyful life, an empowered life, a life where we surround ourselves with those who value us. Yet, when we allow whomever it might be to keep pushing us and bullying us, <laughs> then what do we do? We sacrifice ourselves and we live in survival, just waiting for the next shoe to drop. And that's when we get sick and we get depressed and all kinds of, uh, then we have some mental health issues because we, our bodies are not, our bodies, our souls, our spirits um, are not meant to be uh, squashed like that and quelled. You know, we are here to take our power and to be the very best version of ourselves, you know? And so we don't want to be a story of, uh, we don't want to have a story of abuse. We want to have a story of overcoming, right? And um, um, it's kind of like the nature of human beings is about dominating uh, 
others, right? You know, it's survival of the fittest and it's um, only the strong survive and uh, give someone an inch and what did they do? Yeah, they take a mile for sure. But um, for me uh, and for you, I mean, the only reason I'm giving you this uh, story is just because I know you can relate to it in some aspect, some aspect of it. Anyway, it's that we're not to ignore and we're certainly not to deny I wasn't supposed to do that, uh, the car issues, and you not to ignore and not to deny certain issues in your life. Um, we're not to excuse their unconscious behavior, uh, but remember that's their path and their karma, and really it has nothing to do with us because our, um, our challenge here on planet Earth is to love ourselves. And when we can really love ourselves, then we're in a position to love others because then we see the oneness in everything, right? So our lives are about us and about our evolution. And it's not about, you know, gossiping about anybody else or, or meddling into other people's business. I mean, who really cares? We, we have so much to do for ourselves and to to monitor ourselves and every morning to think about how much better today we're going to be than we were yesterday and then at the end of the day to think how did we do yeah so um so our situations are really divinely orchestrated circumstances and situations and their opportunities for us to become our very best self um and we're all on a journey together and the journey is to um, the journey we face during this lifetime is that there are no accidents. You know, the universe is <laughs> is in charge for sure. And God, yeah, and the divine source is all knowing and presents us with brilliant opportunities to evolve. Because after all, that is why we're here. I mean, to become better versions of ourselves, right? So at times we must confront for the alternative, maybe to sacrifice ourselves, and we're surely not going to do that anymore, right? Our adversary is looking out for number one. And so we have to look out for number one for ourselves too. And we are to love ourselves. It's all about self-love and opening our heart to ourself before we can open it to anyone else, right? And we respect ourselves and that extends to every area of our life and we're to walk tall and walk proud and that includes how we care for ourselves and how we care for our bodies and how we care for our health and our happiness and our peace and contentment and our joy and so when I was driving that Honda and that hatchback, you know, would fly open and the alarm was going off and the lights were flashing, was I loving myself? I mean, I can assure you my family was laughing at me, um, not with me. But not only were they not respecting me by creating such insanity, but I wasn't respecting myself because I was putting up with this crap and I was going to the dealership kind of saying, well, I don't know what's going on with it. And they'd say, well, we don't know what's going on with it. And then finally the guy would wink at me and he'd say, you know, so somebody's playing with you. And so um, I took it to dealership after dealership. I didn't know what else to do. I took it to the police and, and they didn't really care because they said, well, where's the proof? You know, uh, give me the names of the people that might be doing this. Well, I was not gonna have them. I just wasn't going to go there, you know? And it's really interesting because um, it's not about the material world because it really is about our energy. And that's that was like such um, a light bulb moment because um, if it's about our energy and if we feel like a victim, then we manifest situations where that put us in a victimhood kind of a mindset. You know, I should have like read them the riot act and, and instead of writing them letters about how much I love them and I miss them and, um, you know, I mean, some souls, um, you can't really do that with some souls because they're still asleep and they think that they're all right. And really it doesn't have any, our life doesn't have anything to do with anybody else. Our life has everything to do with us. 
So your life has everything to do with you and don't worry about anybody else. You don't care what anybody else thinks or does or says or whatever because you have no control over them, right? And so all I could do was just to love myself more and more and um, to be an example to not cower and to stand tall and protect myself right and not worry about anything else and so the dealership wasn't going to do anything um and until i dealt with my family to begin with and i think they call it a karmic knot i could be wrong but i think they call it a karmic knot and that's when we keep creating karma by not dealing with issues that are right in front of our little nose right so it's time to put our foot down and stop the stupidity and the insanity and not play their game. And it was like a long year of like Halloweens, you know, because they were all wearing masks and saying boo. And uh, it was time for me to say boo back. And I see you. I know you. I know you keep pushing me until I love myself and say no more. I could use the F word there, no fucking more. Absolutely not. But anyway, so God, the divine source, spirit, the energy of all creation gives us opportunities to become our best self and to be our best self, right? We're here to love ourselves, and um, we do that when we show others that they cannot abuse us. And um, we're all divine beings, and that's what we have to remember. We're all very divine. I mean, we are divine through and through, and we're here to thrive, not just to survive. And we're here to thrive and live in peace and enjoy and embrace the miracles that are all around us um, that this life has given us, yes? And so I ask you, spend a few moments thinking about the times that you did not want to deal with crappy situations, right? And so you kept getting pushed until you did. And then you finally felt good about yourself, right? Well, yeah, that's the most important thing. We just, you know, it's like there's no more procrastination. We have to take our power and do it right now. So may you rejoice in your wonder and in your splendor as you remember to love yourself first and always. Yes. So until next time, I love you. Bye.